this video we're going to be talking about optimization and how to sketch the graph of a function. And remember that when we're sketching the graph, we're going to be looking at three things primarily. First of all, where the function is increasing and decreasing, we're going to need to find critical points in order to determine this piece of information. Where the function is concave up and concave down, and we'll need to find inflection points in order to determine concavity. And then we're going to look at the asymptotes of the function. And if we can get a good picture of these three things, then we should be able to get a good idea of what the graph is going to look like. So in this particular problem, we've been given the function f of x is 3x squared minus 6x plus 5. So the first thing we want to look at is where is this function increasing and where is it decreasing? So in order to do that, we'll need to find critical points. And remember to find critical points, we take the first derivative of the original function, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. So we're going to take the first derivative, which of course is f prime of x, and taking the derivative of the right-hand side, we're going to get 6x, because when we bring this 2 down in front, we get 3 times 2. We subtract 1 from the exponent, so we end up with a 6 in front, and 1 is the new exponent. That's power rule. So 6x. The derivative of negative 6x is just going to be a negative 6, and the derivative of the constant 5 is 0. So this is our derivative function. We want to set this equal to 0 and solve it for x. So we have 6x minus 6 equals 0. Adding 6 to both sides, we get 6x is equal to 6. And then dividing both sides by 6, we get x is equal to 1. So x equals 1 is our potential critical point. What we need to do is test this critical point to see if the function changes direction once it reaches the value x equals 1. So in order to check to make sure that the function changes direction, in other words, that it's increasing on one side of x equals 1 and decreasing on the other, or vice versa, what we need to do is use the first derivative test. And the first derivative test lets us plug values on either side of our potential critical point into the first derivative. So if we draw a basic number line here, and we put our potential critical point, x equals 1, right in the middle of it, what we want to do is we want to test values on either side. So for example, 0 is a value to the left of 1, 2 is a value to the right of 1, so 0 and 2 will be our test values. We're going to take those test values and we're going to plug them into the first derivative, f prime of x, which is why it's called the first derivative test. So starting with 0, we're going to plug 0 into the first derivative, so we're going to get f prime of 0 is equal to, remember that the derivative is 6x minus 6, so when we plug in 0, we're going to get 6 times 0 minus 6, which is going to be equal to 0 minus 6 or negative 6. We'll come back to this result in a second. Let's go ahead and plug in the other test value, 2. So we're going to get f prime of 2 is equal to 6 times 2 minus 6, which is 12 minus 6, or positive 6. So the exact value that we get here is not important. What's important is whether or not these values are positive or negative. So here we have negative 6, that's a negative value that's less than 0. Here we have positive 6, that's a positive value that's greater than 0. So if the value we get is less than 0, then that indicates that the function is decreasing on the interval represented by that test value. So remember here we plugged in 0, this test value of 0. So because we got a negative value, negative 6, when we plugged in that test value, that means that the original function is decreasing on that interval. So 0 represents the interval, everything to the left of 1. So our function is decreasing, we got a negative value, our function is decreasing on this interval. The other test value, 2, gave us a positive result. We got a positive 6, so we got a positive result. That means that the function is increasing on this interval. So just looking at this chart we've made here, we can see that the function is decreasing. Then when it hits the point x equals 1, it starts increasing. So we can see the change in direction, which verifies that x equals 1 is in fact a critical point, and in addition, that x equals 1 represents a local minimum of the function because the function is decreasing to the left and increasing to the right. We can literally see it coming down and then going up, and this point right here represents the lowest point in this neighborhood here. So that means x equals 1 is a local minimum. And in fact, because x equals 1 was the only critical point we identified, we can also say that it is a global 
minimum of the function. Whenever you find just one critical point, that means that you can determine that the critical point is a global minimum or global maximum. So in this case, x equals 1 represents the global minimum of the function. So we have critical points. We have increasing, decreasing behavior. Now let's talk about concavity. In order to find where the function is concave up and concave down, we need to take the second derivative in order to find inflection points of the function. So remember, critical points are the points where the function changes direction from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa, from decreasing to increasing. Inflection points are the points where the function changes concavity, so it changes from either concave up to concave down, or vice versa, from concave down to concave up. So in order to find inflection points, we have to take the second derivative. So remember that our first derivative was 6x minus 6. So the second derivative, f double prime of x, is going to be the derivative of 6x is 6. The derivative of negative 6 is 0. So our second derivative is just 6. Now normally, if we still had a variable remaining in our second derivative, we would have to set this second derivative equal to 0 and solve for x. And any values we found for x would represent inflection points. But here, because there's no x variable left in the second derivative, what we can say is that the second derivative is always positive. So this value here is always going to be greater than 0. Because the second derivative is always positive, that means that the function is going to be concave up everywhere in its domain. If we had gotten a negative value here, we could say that the function is concave down everywhere. If we had had a variable remaining here, we would have had to set the second derivative equal to 0, solve for values of x, those would have been our potential inflection points, and then we would have wanted to use the second derivative test to verify whether or not the function changed concavity at those inflection points. But here we can say that the function is concave up everywhere. We know that x equals 1 is a global minimum. What about asymptotes? Well, if we start with vertical asymptotes, there's nowhere that this function is going to be undefined. Polynomial functions are continuous everywhere. There's nowhere that they're undefined, so there's going to be no vertical asymptote. There's also going to be no horizontal asymptote because we're not dealing with a rational function. And for the same reason, there's going to be no slant asymptote. So there are no asymptotes for this function. So now we can go ahead and try to sketch the graph. So we know x equals 1 is an interesting point. So let's go ahead and plug x equals 1 into the original function to see what coordinate point it represents on the graph. So plugging 1 into the function, we're going to get f of 1 is equal to 3 times 1 squared is 3, minus 6 times 1 is minus 6, and then plus 5. So we're going to get 3 minus 6 is a negative 3, plus 5 is a positive 2, which gives us the coordinate point 1, 2. So let's go ahead and sketch that point, 1, 2. So here's this point right here. We know the function is decreasing to the left of this point, increasing to the right of this point, which would make sense because we'd get a bowl-looking graph. That would give us a graph that is concave up everywhere. Let's find a couple more points. For example, the point f of 0 here along the y-axis. We'll plug 0 into the original function. So we'll get 0 squared is 0 times 3 is 0. Minus 6 times 0 is going to be a minus 0 and then plus 5. So the result then is 5 which gives us the point 0, 5. So if we plot that point 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we get this point right here. And then finally, let's take the test value x equals 2 and let's plug that in. So f of 2 is going to be equal to 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 6 times 2 is 12 and then plus 5. We get a value of 5, which is the point 2, 5. So if we plot that, we get 2 and then all the way up here to 5, right about here. And this should make sense because what we see emerging here is a parabola that looks something like this, which we know, of course, is a parabola. So here what we see is the parabola that is concave up everywhere. It opens up everywhere in its domain. We can see here this point at x equals 1, or the coordinate point 1, 2. That is the global minimum of the function. We can see that the function is decreasing from negative infinity all the way to 1 and increasing from 1 all the way to positive infinity. And we can see that there are no asymptotes of the function. So that's how you evaluate a function for increasing, decreasing concavity and asymptotes to sketch its graph.